here's a slightly different uh, kidney section than the one which we previously looked at. And in this one here, really uh, what we're looking at it for is to take a look at the uh, arrangement and disposition and structure of the mucosa that lines the renal uh, calyces and the renal pelvis. So to orient you uh, on this uh, section here, what we have here is the tip of a uh, medullary pyramid or papilla of the medullary pyramid, the tip of it which is just here. And this tip is surrounded by a cup-shaped uh, minor calyx and this is the uh, cup-shaped uh, structure so that the uh, urine drips from the tip of the medullary pyramid and is caught in this cup-shaped uh, object here and this will converge to form a uh, major, actually this is probably minor calyx, minor and then major calyx and these converge to form the renal pelvis. So what we're going to look at now is a little bit at the tip of this medullary pyramid here at the papilla and we're going to look at the epithelium lining the papilla, some of the ducts present in the papilla and then we'll move across onto the calyx and take a look at the epithelium of the calyx. So here again for orientation, here's the renal, uh, here's the papilla, the tip of the uh, medullary pyramid, and here's uh, part of the uh, minor calyx, here's the epithelium lining the uh, minor calyx, and this space here is the space across which uh, urine is going to drip from the tip of this medullary pyramid. Here we see these large epithelial lined tubes here, these are the terminal parts of the collecting ducts, and we'll see in a second there are some other tubular structures in here which we can also see. There's an epithelium uh, which lines the tip of the medullary pyramid, which here looks um, either simple or uh, pseudo-stratified, or maybe uh, two-layer uh, stratified. It looks more stratified here, but that's a section uh, artifact. And you can compare the appearance of the epithelium here with the epithelium uh, over here, which is clearly a stratified epithelium, sits on a little uh, basement membrane and there's some smooth muscle uh, located underneath it here. And then uh, out here we have some adipose tissue. So let's take a look at this region here now and see what else we can see. We're at the tip of the medullary pyramid and here we can see the terminal part of a collecting duct. It's now lined by a tall columnar epithelium. Some of these cells are almost uh, flask shaped as we can see here. Some of the cells uh, stain reasonably well and others appear clear and in fact there are two different types of uh, cells that make up collecting duct epithelium but the difference between the two uh, isn't hugely important for you just now. Also visible out here are cross sections of tubes like this one and perhaps this one and this one which are lined by a simple uh, squamous epithelium and these will be the very very tips of uh, very long loops of Henle of juxtamedullary medullary nephrons that extend out uh, to the uh, tip of the uh, medullary pyramid and then interspersed among these we can see cross sections of structures that are filled with red blood cells and these will be um, vasa recta and other blood vessels that supply the uh, medulla. Here we see the epithelium lining the uh, surface of the um, uh, tip of the medullary pyramid and we can see it's either a simple perhaps stratified uh, epithelium and is um, columnar is the uh, cell shape which we see here. And now we'll proceed across the gap through which uh, urine would drip until we encounter the epithelium here. This is the epithelium lining the renal calyx and it's the same epithelium will be found on the renal pelvis in the ureter and lining the urinary bladder. So this is urothelium. It's a stratified epithelium. Technically it's classified as a stratified uh, cuboidal epithelium, although the cuboidal shape of the cells isn't always obvious and depends on the state of distension of the particular organ that you're looking at. The basement membrane would be along here. We can see that the lowermost cells are generally small round cells and these become larger and somewhat rounder with paler staining nuclei as they move toward the uh, surface. The very surface has a layer of protective layer of glycoprotein mucin which helps protect against the uh, urine that drips into this area. Here's a slide of the ureter. The ureter is a narrow, relatively narrow muscular tube that leads from the renal pelvis and carries the urine to the bladder. Um, we can see here Here's the ureter itself. Here's the lumen of the ureter forming this kind of star shape. It's lined by urothelium that we'll see in a bit more detail in a moment. There's some connective tissue beneath this, some dense connective tissue. And then there are several layers of uh, quite thick, smooth muscle which uh, make the uh, ureter quite contractile. Uh, on the outer part of it here we see uh, blood vessels and so on uh, which supply the wall of the uh, ureter. Here's the large ureteric artery that's associated with it 
and maybe ureteric vein. And the hole here we can see is embedded in a fat pad. Now we'll uh, increase the magnification a little and take a look at the epithelium and the uh, underlying tissues. So here then is the urothelium, the epithelium that lines the uh, ureter. And we can see by comparison with the uh, urothelium that lines the uh, renal calyces and renal pelvis that the structure is essentially the same. There's maybe um, a few less layers of cells, but we can see it's a stratified uh, epithelium here. And as you know from reading notes in your textbook, the epithelium is technically a stratified cuboidal epithelium, but as I mentioned before, the outermost layer of cells won't necessarily look cuboidal because it depends on the state of distension. Uh, here we've got the uh, dense irregular connective tissue uh, here that underlies the epithelium, very dense uh, connective tissue. And then outside here we have multiple intertwined layers of uh, smooth muscle making the uh, ureter quite contractile. We'll just take uh, one uh, more look at slightly higher magnification at the epithelium to see one of the features that's worthy of note. So now we're looking at the uh, mucosa, the epithelium, the urothelium as it lines the uh, ureter and uh, a couple of the features we can see here, the lowest most layer of cells are approximately round and are attached to the not visible basement membrane. As the cells progress to the outermost layers they become larger and some of them become um, like this cell here, um, dome shaped and these are the classical dome shaped uh, or dome cells of a uh, urothelium. There's another dome cell here and perhaps another dome cell here. And one other thing to uh, make note of is the surface glycocalyx, which we can see here is this mauve uh, staining along here. It's quite a thick uh, glycocalyx, a glycoprotein uh, coat that coats the uh, surface membrane of these cells. And the glycocalyx that lines the uh, luminal side of the urothelium throughout the urinary system is important in uh, effectively uh, waterproofing this particular epithelium, or if you prefer, preventing urine from uh, leaking between the cells and being resorbed into the interstitial space. Finally, let's take a look at the uh, bladder, which we can see in this slide here. <coughs> We can see that the uh, epithelium is thrown into a whole series of folds and actually the degree of folding of the epithelium is dependent on whether the bladder is filled or empty at the time of tissue preparation. Uh, as you can imagine, if this bladder were full, each of these folds would be uh, stretched out and the whole bladder would be distended with a very much larger uh, lumen than is seen here. The epithelium lines the uh, luminal surface that we can see here. Beneath the epithelium then we have some dense uh, irregular uh, connective tissue that forms a kind of a submucosal layer. And then outside of that again we have what begins as a scattered series of smooth muscle uh, bundles and then very rapidly becomes several layers of uh, very densely packed uh, smooth muscle. And this of course is the uh, muscle which when it contracts um, is responsible for um, allowing us to uh, void our bladders. So now we'll uh, move up and we'll take a look at the epithelium in just a, a bit more detail. And here we're looking at the uh, surface epithelium. Again, it should be very clear to you that this is a, a stratified epithelium. The basal layer of cells here actually look like um, low columnar cells. They certainly seem to be uh, narrower than they are uh, tall. And then as the cells progress outward toward the surface, as we can see along here, they become progressively rounder and larger till at the surface they form cells such as we can see here, here and here. Uh, a particular uh, feature of um, bladder cells, uh, particularly the cells that are at the very surface that form the so-called dome cells of the bladder, such as this one here, is that they're frequently binucleate, as we can see in this particular example here. Although what the specific um, importance of that might be, I'm afraid I'm not uh, able to tell you. Um, other than that, again, if we look closely at the surface here, we can see a slightly paler staining area at the very surface. This is where the glycocalyx of, uh, the uh, thick glycocalyx that's found on the bladder urothelium uh, is located. And as I mentioned uh, before, it's involved in both um, sealing the uh, epithelium to prevent the um, leakage of fluid from the lumen of the bladder back into the interstitial space. One other important function of the glycocalyx here is that it's thought to play an important role in um, 
the, both the uh, maintenance and, of course, the prevention of uh, bladder infection because uh, bacteria that can adhere to this glycocalyx uh, layer are bacteria that are capable of causing infection, whereas other bacteria are incapable of um, adhering to it. Here, directly beneath the epithelium, there's some loose connective tissue, which we can tell by the degree of cellularity we see here. And then beneath that, again, we have dense irregular connective tissue. We have some vessels, which we can see little bits of nerve. And as we move through the dense irregular connective tissue submucosal layer, um, again encountering more blood vessels, we'll eventually begin to encounter the uh, smooth muscle that forms a very large part of the wall. So moving outward here, and here's the uh, smooth muscle, here it's cut in uh, cross section and an oblique section, and here are some little bundles of smooth muscle in this very dense uh, connective tissue. So that uh, essentially is the uh, structure of the uh, urinary bladder in the human.